All right. My name is Sean Michael Walker, and this is... This is Insurance You Indemnify Me, the podcast. I'm, <laughs> I'm always like, what is the name of this podcast? And today we have somebody that I was actually very, I've been very excited about having on the show for a long time, Jack Jameson. Jack Jameson, how are you doing this morning? Doing great, my friend. Jack drove down an hour and a half today to meet with me. Where are you at? Uh, are you in Fort Collins, Fort Collins exactly? Right outside of Fort Collins, okay. yeah. Uh, but you're, what, what is, what is, where have you been in the United States? You, it seems like you've been everywhere. So are you a Wyoming guy? Are you a Louisiana guy? Are you a, what are you exactly? That's a good question. So I was born in Texas. <laughs> okay. Lived there to, uh, lived born in Dallas, Texas. Texas. Dallas. Uh, lived there until I was 14. Uh, when I was 14, uh, we moved to Louisiana. Okay. That's where my mom's from. Okay. And I finished high school in Louisiana, went to LSU. Yeah. And I ended up in Wyoming, met my beautiful wife, Kim. Okay. Uh, got married, uh, lived there for 30 years, mm -hmm. and then uh, moved to Colorado about six years ago. Wow. So a little bit of everything, man. A so little bit of everything. I've got a little Wyoming, Louisiana, Texas, Colorado accent. That's a weird, uh, every, you know, it's funny when you say that, you got that weird accent, is uh, every time I talk to you, I'm like, where, it's like, what is this accent that is coming out of his mouth? So it's uh, every single time I'm always like, how do I pinpoint this? Exactly. Um, so where, if I were to give you the keys and say, here, go play for the weekend. And you were, and, and, and like, if I were to say, here's the keys to an awesome sports car, go have uh, an amazing nostalgic weekend. It wouldn't be Dallas. Cause you left Dallas before you were too, you know, you were too young right, to have right. wild adventures in Dallas. Right. Uh, would that be Louisiana? Would that be like New Orleans for you? Or would that be, where would that be? If I were to say, go have a crazy, wild, nostalgic weekend with this car and take your wife and go just run around and relive your younger, wilder days, what city would that be? It'd probably be Baton Rouge. Where Baton I went to Rouge. LSU. Okay. Because it'd be nice to actually remember yeah. the college years <laughs> <laughs> and go see some things that, I don't, that are sort of... Gone. Yeah, you're like, oh, I think we did this that one time. Yeah. I was yeah. in my room studying all yeah. the time. So right. Like, I'm get, sure. I didn't get I'm to sure. see much. I'm sure. What'd you get a degree in? Uh, business. Business. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, good, 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 good. So how long were you there? You, you Just a short period of time. I mean, you couldn't have... If you were 30 years in... Um, if you were 30 years in Wyoming, you could have only been in Louisiana for what, five, six, seven years? Yeah, I was about there about eight years. Okay, actually. cool. Good. Good. Good days? Or, or were you like, man, these are weird people down here in Louisiana? No, you know, I, I, <laughs> I love Louisiana people. And if you've uh -huh. never been to Louisiana, it's, it, you, should, you should need a passport to go there, especially New yeah, Orleans, South yeah, Louisiana. It is different. I, the people are great. Uh, miss the food. That's yeah. the thing I miss the most is the food. Yeah. I miss my fresh seafood, my yeah. Cajun food, and that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. I go down uh, every couple of years to catch an LSU game. Yeah. Do you really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, uh, okay, so we got to get into this. We need to talk about so much today. We're going to set you loose and, and tell us some stories. Um, the first time I met Jack, how about I tell that story yeah. first? The first time I met Jack, I was in, it, we, you and I bumped into each other in an airport uh, in Kansas City, I think. We were both headed down to uh, a speaking gig, a convention, the Soup Live event, and uh, and you were wearing a farmer's uh, something, backpack. a farmer's yeah. backpack or sweater or something. And, uh, and, and I just said, Hey farmers, I referred to you as farmers cause I had no idea who you were. Uh, I said, Hey farmers, uh, uh, where are you going? And you said, I'm going to Dallas. I said, me too, but what are you going to do? And I'm speaking at an event. I said, Oh, that's funny. I'm emceeing at an event. And so, uh, that's where we first met was I think the night before that big event. Um, but that's, you know, that's the extent of, of, of my Jack knowledge. So I know that you are an insurance God. And, uh, and I playfully use that term, but I know you're an insurance God in that farmer's world. So, and you might, not, you might say, no, Sean, come on. I'm really not, but I know you are. I know you are because when I was at that convention, everybody was like, it's Jack Jameson. Oh my goodness. He's amazing. And then watching your, your, your presentation, it was absolutely amazing. And it was emotional. I'm going clearly people know who this person is because you can't go stand on stage and do that across America and not have people remember Jack Jameson, right? So um, give me a little bit of like who you are from a professional level, like where you've been professionally, what you've done. Just kind of give us like the, the Jack Jameson rundown. Okay. Well, 20 years ago, uh, almost to this day, uh, I answered an ad in the paper. Uh -huh. uh, and it, it, there was an ad in there to become a farmer's agent. <laughs> wow. And uh, I'm working for Frito-Lay. I uh -huh. uh, had a lot of crappy jobs over the years. I was a garbage man. I was a dishwasher for a while. I was a garbage man during the day and a dishwasher uh -huh. at night. Uh -huh. Sold water beds. 
Yeah, you know, yeah. I always say when I do that in live, <laughs> you young people, that's a bed with water. And right, a, right. a lot of them look at me funny. Uh, but I was a Frito-Lay making $30,000 a year, uh, married. My wife's a stay-at-home mom, had yeah. five kids at that yeah. time. Wow. And I thought I had a lot of time to talk, you know, think. And I just yeah. thought, you know, I, I, I need a career. All I've ever had is a job. So yeah. I put my resume together and sent it in. And I remember the DM called me and said, uh, I just got your, your your resume, young man. I said, yes, sir. He goes, I've been doing this 40 years, and I must say it's the most pathetic resume I've ever seen. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I'm like, thank you. Oh, what, so what to say uh, to that? Is that a compliment or what? But anyway, great. he called me in for an interview off that pathetic resume and gave yeah. me a shot. And yeah. uh, I started a scratch agency with farmers in Casper, Wyoming. Wow. And uh, worked my tail off and, and built it up to uh, – to, about ten million, eight ten million wow. in premium. Wow! Wow! Um, and um, really, really took to insurance like a fish to water. Wow! Loved it. Uh, was blessed with the support of my beautiful wife and kids to become one of the top farmers agents in the country. And yeah, and uh, and especially with life insurance, uh-huh. started selling a lot of life insurance. Yeah, uh, started making million dollar roundtables and all the achievement clubs with farmers, and. Um, then I started flying around the country speaking about life. Yeah, how did you get into that? Like, how did the uh, I guess I guess when you're you're selling a ton of life and growing an agency on the life product, then the the organization goes, "Hey, you're doing something right. Can you go tell everybody how you're doing it?" Is that how that came to fruition? Yeah, that came. You know, district managers just started asking me to speak. Yeah, what are you doing uh, and how are you doing? They this? saw my life. Go tell numbers. everybody how you're doing this. Well, I had DMs that would bring me out to California and Texas, and they'd uh-huh. say, "Hey, you're my secret weapon." Okay. Because if I bring an agent from from Houston to Idaho, uh-huh. they're going to go, well, yeah, if I was in Houston, I could do the of same thing. Of course I could do Yeah, this. if I was in San Francisco, oh, yeah. They'd say, hey, Jack's doing this from Casper, Wyoming. Is there anybody in this room that could find Casper, Wyoming on a map? <laughs> you right. know what's funny? I was going to ask you, like, well, so where is Casper, Wyoming exactly? Half of the listeners are like, where is that exactly? So- you threw a dart at, at, at the state of Wyoming, uh-huh. it'd be right in the center. Okay. Uh, uh, I was in a town, Casper, Wyoming, 55,000 people with 12 other farmers agents. Wow. Not including however many other agents were there. Wow. A lot of people don't know this, but Wyoming's the eighth largest state in the United States land area. Really? But it's the least populated. Wow. So there's 550,000 people in the whole state. Wow. So when I'm speaking in <laughs> Dallas or Houston or San Francisco or somewhere, I always say, you probably have more people than that drive out of your office every day. Wow. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, wow. Uh, so, um, so I started writing life at a high level, so I started flying around the country. I gave a talk in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'll never forget it. Okay. It was a cold winter's day, you know, cold uh-huh. fall day in, in Minnesota. Yeah. And I got done speaking, and I, I got a very nice standing ovation. And the head of life uh, at that time said, hey, can I talk to you? Yeah. And he, I, and he pulls me aside, and we sit, by, we sit in the lobby of the hotel the fireplace, mm-hmm. and he says, that's the best life talk I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. They laughed at the right places. Mm-hmm. They, they cried at the right places. Uh, we need that passion and that know-how on the company side. Yeah. Would you sell your agency and come to work for Farmers Rural Life? We'll create a position called the head of agent life development. Yeah, yeah. So I sold my agency, went and did that for three years. Absolutely loved it because my passion is teaching. Mm-hmm. Uh, met a lot of cool people, but uh, you know, I'd be, I was on the road. You know, that, you know that'd 48. be tough. Yeah, just just nuts. That'd be so, tough. So uh, my wife says, you know, we got to get you off the road. So I started looking at districts. Yeah, uh, I was blessed to be offered districts in about fifteen states. Yeah, uh, we chose Fort Collins, Colorado, because it's super because close. It was three hours to my great kids in yeah. Casper, Wyoming. Yeah. Took over the district, uh, took one of the worst districts in the company, and turned it into a top district, uh-huh. uh, a president's council top of district. Strictly through life, or like through, 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 through all the lines. Just, you know, teaching agents yeah. and encouraging them, and yeah. and te- you know, wanting more for them than they probably wanted for themselves. Yeah. Realizing. Unlocking their potential. Yeah. Uh, but yes, it was one of the worst life districts in the company. Uh, <laughs> and it, beca- it became uh, one of the top three in the company two or three years in a row. Wow. Uh, uh, because my passion is life insurance. Yeah. But unlike a lot of DMs, you know, I had a little unfair advantage. A lot of uh, district managers have never sold a policy. Yeah, yeah. But I had sold at a high level. Yeah. So I would actually go on sales calls with my agents yeah, yeah. and sell and help them sell life. Sure. Sometimes I would just have the agent set up the appointment and I'd yeah. go sell it myself. I'll go. I'll them. go. Yeah, yeah. I'll get it yeah, done. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, have you always, look, uh, present, presenting in front of folks usually has to involve a little, uh, there's a little high of presenting, right? To be the presenter, to be the performer. That's the word I'm looking right. for. Um, have you always been a performer or is that, was that kind of new and you were kind of going, whoa, I, I didn't even know I had this in me. Or, or did you know that you were addicted to performing? That, that's a nice way of saying, you know, have you always known you can talk so much? Yeah. <laughs> yes. My wife says, 
I will talk to a fence post an hour and a half before I realize it's not talking back. <laughs> so, yes, I, you know, I grew up really, really, really dirt poor uh-huh. and didn't have the best clothes. You know, I had hose on my jeans back in the 70s when yeah. that wasn't, you yeah, know, $200 right, right, pair right. of jeans, right? Uh, it's because we couldn't afford anything other. So I sort of, you know, I wasn't the athlete. Yeah. Didn't have the money if I wanted to be to, to, to pitch participating much. Yeah. And so I became the cl- sort of the class clown. Right. You know, that kind yeah, of guy yeah, that yeah, yeah. joked with people and stuff yeah. like that. And so I've always loved making people laugh. Yeah. I've always, I, you know, I had to lead my senior play. Yeah. And so that you kind of were stuff. a performer. Yeah, I love being on the stage. Yeah, doesn't yeah. bother me at all. Yeah, yeah. You know, Good. I thrive on it. Good. So um, so you go to Minneapolis. Is this your first, this is your first big talk in front no, of everybody? Had, you you I, had I, done plenty of about 100 by then. Okay, so let's, let, so let's just kind of quantify. So for how long, uh, how many years were you done with, running the day-to-day farmers agency and you were running around the United States doing presentations. I was doing that from 2016, uh, let me see, 2013 yeah. through 2016. So and for so three years. Literally every farmers agent across the United States has seen a Jack Jamison presentation about life. Is that an accurate yeah. statement? I mean, I don't want to over exaggerate. I'm just trying to help the audience understand. Is that true? I mean, has everybody seen a Jack Jameson life presentation or is that an over exaggeration? Probably some six or seven times. I'm like an episode <laughs> oh of friends. Gosh. I'm like friends. I'm always yeah, on, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 Series friends. So, and that's one of the reasons I became a big name in farmers was A, because I was a top agent and in, in, in that kind of stuff. But, you know, mainly when you run around the, the country and yeah. run your mouth off nonstop for years, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know like, pretty oh, much here, here people, sort of, guy again. people sort of know who you yeah, are, yeah, right, and that yeah. type of deal. And, uh, and I'm still doing that to this day. So I've seen, and I want to get into some of the stuff that I've seen because it was just powerful storytelling, but uh, um, were your presentations always the same presentations or were you mixing it up and you were always giving them something new? And, and then I saw, what I saw was, Great storytelling about the importance of life insurance, but did you get into like the brass tacks with them as well? Of like, this is actually how you execute the 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 life policy, or or did you just kind of, or or was it was it just high level storytelling? And then they would walk away go, crying and going, "I can do that. I can tell those stories too." Or what what was it? My goal when I'm on the main stage, yeah, is to, like when I was at Soup Life, sure, sure. which was a great event by the way. Yeah, it was. Um, um, is to give the audience the want to to sell life. Yeah, and you did. You because absolutely if, did. If you don't have the want to, yeah. Sean, yeah. the know-how to is going to do you no good anyway. Yeah, yeah. So from the stage... Or the DM can teach them the know-how right. to. It yeah. doesn't matter the know-how to. They can do that later. From the stage, I want you to realize it is your moral obligation okay. as an agent okay. or producer, wherever yeah. row you are, to protect your, their, your clients in every aspect of their lives, yeah. not just what we choose to protect, yeah. but... That is our moral obligation to talk to everyone about life insurance. Yeah. So I want you, when I get off that stage, to A, now I want to write life. Uh-huh. And I always say my uh, my goal when I speak yeah. is to inspire half the audience and offend the other half. <laughs> <laughs> okay. and, and if I do both those things, yeah. I've done my job. And if I offend you, Sean, you deserve to be offended. Because it means you feel bad about yourself because you haven't been writing life insurance. Oh, I see. That so kind that's, of that's what I mean. Okay. Not offended by politically incorrect offended, okay, okay. which I can do very well, as you know. <laughs> I'll behave myself today. Okay. But uh, no, to offend you that, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years and I'm not writing any life. I'm not truly protecting my Yeah, I am uh, I haven't even begun to explore a line of business that I should probably right. explore. Um, so how would you, most of most of the audience is, is property and casualty insurance agents, right? Most of the audience, uh, they write property and casualty all day long. Um, and, and I, I would argue most of the audience doesn't lead with life. Doesn't, uh, doesn't probably write a lot of life. So let's transition into like, how does, how does a, a, a property and casualty agent who goes down that road, you know, has that, that channel or that groove very well defined, how do they make that transition into, you're right, Jack, I can make this transition. I can begin to start to go down this road more effectively. What well, would you tell that agent? It's okay to lead with life. Okay. You know, we're taught to go through the garage, uh-huh, right? Uh-huh. And that's what I was taught in the beginning. Uh-huh. So, and I used that philosophy my first two years. Yeah. And my first two years, by going through the garage, you know, my transaction uh, uh, over to life insurance would be, hey, Sean, we talked about protecting your assets tonight. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's why we talked about coverages. Mm-hmm. That's why we wrote that umbrella, because you don't have to be a millionaire to be sued like one. Great right. line for an umbrella, right, by the right. way. Yeah. Uh, but now let's talk about your most important asset yourself. Yeah. So why would I, as your insurance agent, <clears throat> protect all your other assets, but stop at your most important asset? Yeah. Does that even make sense to you? Yeah. 
And that worked, right? Yeah, yeah. And I was, I think my first year, not even really know what I was doing. I always say my district manager was such a great guy. He handed me a book of business. It was called a phone book, right? <laughs> he said, everything you need is in there, right? Half the audience is like, what's a phone book? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he said, there's birthday socials and addresses yeah. there. Go at it, right? Yeah. And so um, my first year, I issued and paid 68 life policies. Wow. And next year, I did 72. Wow. But then I was at a, I was at a convention uh, for Montana and Wyoming. Uh-huh. And they said nobody in either Montana or Wyoming had ever issued 100 lot policies with farmers. Oh, so somebody ever. threw down the gauntlet. Right, yeah. And they said it couldn't be done because there wasn't enough people. Uh, well, I get angry when people say safe them can't be done. Yeah, yeah. So I laid in bed that night going, how am I going to write 100 lives? I'm going to go, you know what? If I'm writing 68 to 70 by sort of oh, by the way people I do life insurance, yeah. what if I actually started leading with life? Okay. What would that lead to? Yeah. How did that look? Well, let's just say, Sean, you and your wife were referred to me to about your home and autos. Right, sure. I would sit down with you and I'd say, hey, Sean, I know you're here to talk about your home and autos. Yeah. And I'd love to write your home and autos. Yeah. But to be honest with you, there's a hundred different companies in the state of Wyoming that can write your home and autos. Yeah. Not everybody can do what I do. Yeah. I want to talk to you about the most important policy that I offer as an insurance agent. And I always say offer, not sell. Yeah. Nobody likes to be sold. They like to yeah, be offered right, things. Right. And Sean, since it is the most important policy that I offer, we're going to treat it that way and talk about it first. Hey, if we get to your home and autos, we get to your home and autos. If not, we'll have to make another appointment. Mm-hmm. Did it work on everyone? No. But 50 to 70% of the people in all the years that they're buying home and auto, yeah. nobody's ever going to talk about life insurance first. Right. So they look at each other and go, Oh, uh, okay. okay. Uh, how long is this going to take? Right, is exactly. this a ten-minute pitch or is this a thirty-minute right. pitch? Well, people are buying home and autos with this. Yeah, yeah. They're buying life insurance with this. Yeah. And you know what this does for you? This separates you from one eight hundred cheap insurance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This separates you from your competition. Yeah. So I would talk to people with this first because life insurance, right, is, is comes from this, and I, and and. I would make that connection with them. Yeah. And I'd make a connection with them that no insurance agent had ever made with them all the years of them buying insurance. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so by the time I got to the home and autos, instead of, oh, you're $40 more a month, you mean for only $40 more a month I get all that? Yeah. It just changed the whole vibe. So by leading with life, and a lot of agents would say, oh, your home and autos are going to go down. No. Hmm. That first year that I led with life, not only did I did 109 issued and paid, mm-hmm. that was the least amount I ever mm-hmm. did in my career, I also had my biggest home and auto. Wow. Ever, because I made a different connection with them by leading with life. Insurance. Yeah, see, I think as the consumer, I might think, okay, I'll listen to this little this little pitch for the first 10 minutes, but ultimately I just want to get my auto and right. home uh, right. insured. But, I mean, if you're effective enough in that first five or 10-minute pitch and you've pulled enough heartstrings, then suddenly I'm going, okay, yeah, let's do do me one of those as well. You know, give me a million dollars of that as well or something, right? Is, well, that, is that how that occurred? I mean, I assume you had consumers going... I didn't know I was getting into this conversation. Right, exactly. Well, my first million dollar round table, I'll never forget. Yeah. Uh, you, you got the first timers badge on and every yeah. year you make it, you get it a thing. And I'm sitting at breakfast with two, two New York life agents. One uh-huh. was from London and one was from New York city. Uh-huh. And they had, they look like four star generals. They had all the awards all the way down their right, thing. Right. And I'm hearing them talking about how much money they're making selling life insurance, yeah, and yeah. how many MDRTs they've been to on top of the tables. And here I am, just a lowly PNC agent out of Casper, Wyoming. Yeah. And I got enough nerve to say, hey guys, you obviously know what you're doing. I'm a first timer. Yeah. If you could give me two words of advice, what would it be? Yeah. Both of them, I kid you not, first of all, they both took a crumpled piece of paper out of their suit pockets. Uh-huh. And they said, we never leave our house without a top 10 life prospect list. Interesting. At all times. Huh. At all times. Every day. Seven days a week. Never leave your office without a 10 prospect list. That you, 10 people you're going to talk to about life insurance that day. Huh. And I go, okay, simple enough. I can handle that. Yeah. What's the second part? Good, really good at telling stories. Right. All top life agents are good at telling stories. Right. And if you don't have a story, borrow a story till you get your own story. Right. 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 And when you're telling a story... And one of the clients has got a tear in their eye. It's over. Yeah. Shut the you're, hell up and start yeah, start yeah, typing yeah, yeah, out yeah, or yeah. writing out the <laughs> life app or something yeah, like right, that. Right. So I took that to heart, and I and to this to this day I have a top ten list on my phone. Yeah. Of life it prospects, uh, and uh, I'm really good at telling stories. You are great at telling stories, and and so I want to just tee this up perfectly for you so you can tell a story. Um, the show is called Insurance. You indemnify me, uh, which means you make me whole. Can you tell me the best story 
you have in your entire career of a situation where an insurance company made a family as whole as they possibly could. Yes. An indemnification situation where you go, I was proud to be the insurance agent that was representing the company that indemnified the client. Yes. So the first life policies that I sold outside of my family uh, were to this couple in Casper. And I wrote wrote both of them. And then I found out they had a daughter. Mm -hmm. And they had four grandkids. Mm -hmm. So I brought up life insurance on the grandkids. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, because a lot of times the grandparents are more financially stable than their kids. Sure. And as a grandpa of six, yeah. we want to do anything for our, for our, for our grandkids. Yeah. You know, I was waiting by my grandkids' crib with my life app, waiting for them to turn 15 <laughs> days old so I could write a life policy on them. So I brought up life That's pretty ins- dorky. Yeah, I know. That's but, pretty dorky. That, that's all right. <laughs> They're all protected. So, um, uh, they wear, said, wear that with a badge of honor. Yeah, exactly. Though, like, uh, yeah, so they is. said, hey, that's a good idea. Our daughter can't afford it because she's working at 7-Eleven sure, in Walmart. Sure, and sure. Our son-in-law is laid off in the field. They live in a trailer park yeah, in right, sure, right sure. Wyoming. Which is fine. Right? So we but get grandma and grandpa can't afford right, it. Yeah. Right. We get, the, we get the permission from the daughter to write the lie policies, mm-hmm. and we write them, and they have four kids. Yeah. Um, about a year later, their youngest daughter, uh, a couple of months before her second birthday, she gets out of the crib somehow in the middle of the night uh. and falls out mm. and gets lodged mm. between the dresser and the wall. As a parent, I can't even imagine. Yeah, right. right? We just assume our kids are going to outlive us, right? Yeah. And I always say, Sean, bad things happen to good people. Yeah. And I hate that bad things happen to good people. And I wish I could stop bad things from happening to good people, but I can't. Yeah. But what we can do something about is the people that are left behind. Yeah. So this family is absolutely devastated. Yeah. They got to bury this girl, mm-hmm. right? And today, an average funeral is ten or twelve grand. Seventy-two hmm. percent of all Americans could not come up with enough money for a funeral today without putting it on a credit card. It's incredible. Think about that. That's incredible. So every time you get that credit card bill, what you get to relive, right? So anyway, they had to bury this little girl, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, so. They go to the funeral home, and, and they were telling me the story a, a couple of years later, and the funeral director says, how are you going to pay for this? And we're like, oh, we have no idea. Mm-hmm. Oh, great. Let's go look at some pine coffins. Let's go look at some, you know, little headstones. Right. The funeral director turns around and says, you didn't happen to have life insurance in her, did you? And the mom goes, you know what? My, my mom, their grandma, did something like that, but I don't know how it works. Call my mom. Yeah. So the funeral director calls the mom, the grandma, and the grandma says, call Jack. He'll know what to do. The funeral director called me. Uh-huh. And I said, yes, sir. She had a $100,000 life policy. Yeah. He goes, can you fax me proof of that? I said, yes, sir. Yeah. He gets off the phone. Anything in the place, it's yours, right? Uh-huh. Okay. So funerals are not for the people that are passed. They could care less. Mm-hmm. It's for the people that are left behind to give them some closure. Right. And they should be able to have any type of funeral they want. It's going to help give them closure. Mm-hmm. So... They let the kids help pick out the coffin. One of the most beautiful coffins I've ever seen. It was white with gold trim. It was just so little. Yeah, right? yeah. They, they picked out such a big headstone that each kid got to dedicate a sentence to their sister. Wow, that's right? cool. So it was one less. I always say that no amount of money is going to bring back a loved one, and no amount of money is going to make you miss them any less, but it's going to ease your financial burden. Yeah. And by easing your financial burden, that helps with the emotional burden because it gives you one less thing to worry about, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, so they were able to pick out the coffin, pick out the headstone, and be able to pay for the funeral. And by the way, when we paid out that life claim, we sent ten grand to the funeral home, uh-huh. and then we took the other ninety grand and sent it to the couple. So they didn't even have to worry about that part of it. Right, right? right. That worry was off of them. That's incredible. So the very little girl, beautiful funeral, and all that. Fast forward. 14 years. Wait, before you fast forward, can yep. I interrupt? I, yeah, I do ahead. want to hear the fast forward part, but was this a changing moment for you? You were a young agent, I think. Was yes. this a changing moment for you and your, oh, this means something more than just a broken fender bender kind yeah. of situation? Was this a changing moment in your career as, a, as an insurance agent? Or, or had you already shifted into this gear? You're not a real life insurance agent until you deliver your first death check. Okay. You're, you're not a real life insurance yeah. agent. Okay. Yes, it changed everything for Okay. Me. Okay. When I saw what it did for this family. Was that your first check? Yes, that was my first check. Okay. So it was my first, my first it was one. Incredibly tragic. And uh, so it yeah. had to have changed you. Well, look, when you lose a loved one, you know what becomes your biggest asset? Time. Yeah. 
time to grieve properly, yeah. time to be with your spouse and significant other, time to be with the other kids, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. To be able, I always say that when people get freaky about life insurance on kids, I say, hey, there's a 99.99% chance your kids are going to outlive you. That's not what this is about. Right. This is about locking in their insurability and locking in a rate. Right. right. But Lord forbid, if you lost a child, let me ask you, ma'am or sir, you going to work the next day? No. I'm not going to work anytime in no. the foreseeable no. future. So you got to, you got to, you go to your boss and you say, Hey, I lost a child. I need six months off from work. That's right. Take it, but not with pay. Right. So if you're the breadwinner or you're living on two incomes, like most families, you're going to go back to work sooner than you want to or need to. Yep. You're going to have a decision made for you. So a great line that I always tell agents is people who pass away with life insurance, mm-hmm. their loved ones get to make their own decisions. Mm-hmm. People who pass away without life insurance, their loved ones have decisions made for them. Yeah. So this family was able to take some time off from work and be together as a family. Yeah. So not only did it pay for the funeral and they didn't have to worry about that expense, it also was allowed them to spend valuable time together. Right. So I saw that. Yeah. And so it changed everything for me. Yeah. And so fast forward 14 years later, I'm Facebook friends with the dad mm-hmm. and as you, you know, I'm very active on Facebook. Shocking. A little shock. too active. Yeah, if you follow little me. little too active. My wife breaks down for me all the time, so it's okay. Uh, so um, I'm on Facebook with, with the grandpa Yeah. Uh, about a year and a half ago. Okay. And he puts on Facebook, today would have been my youngest granddaughter's sweet 16th birthday. Yeah. Happy, Amb- happy birthday, Amber. We miss you. We love you. Yeah. And I remember thinking to myself when I read that post, it's been 14 years. Yeah. Where has time gone? Yeah. So, of course, I put something nice on the post. Mm-hmm. The grandpa's private messages me and says, can I call you? I said, yes. He goes, hey, Jack, I, I know how much you're into life insurance because I follow you on Facebook and you obviously helped us. <laughs> and he said, but I want to tell you a story. And, I, and, and, and you have our permission to share this. Yeah. He says, do you remember that when you paid on that life policy, you had my daughter and my son-in-law come in and you took... 20000 per surviving child, and you started a 529 college plan in memory of their sister so they'd never forget her. Mm-hmm. I said, yeah, I do remember that. He says, well, cool. Here's what I want you to know, Jack. My grandkids grew up in a trailer park, mm-hmm. and my oldest granddaughter just graduated from University of Wyoming with a 4.0 in business, and she's had 10, 12 job offers. It's incredible. He says, without that life insurance, we wouldn't have that 529 college plan. Yeah. Without the 529 college plan, I'm not sure my granddaughter goes to college. Yeah, we don't know what the next generation, right. what happens to the next generation. So he says, Jack, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. <clears throat> thank you for what you did for our family. Mm-hmm. You changed the direction of our family for generations to come. That's really cool. Because my son, my grandson is in a second year the University of Wyoming being paid for from that five hundred nine college plan. So what I what this story means, guys and girls, is that what you're doing and not doing every day in your offices as it relates to life insurance mm-hmm. is affecting families for generations to come. And you need to decide today, not tomorrow, how you want to affect families going forward. Yeah. Because you don't know. Yeah. You don't know. And I always figure on Judgment Day, yeah. the good Lord's not going to ask me how much life insurance I sold, mm-hmm. but he is going to ask me how much, how many people I helped. Yeah. And if by the means of helping people, which through life insurance, right. that's okay too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because, guys, when someone passes away, it's like a domino effect. Yeah. One good thing leads to another good thing. One bad thing leads to another bad thing. Yeah. So I always say take lemons and make lemonade. Yeah. And I ask for permission to share that story, and, and I've shared it through the United States hundreds of times. Yeah. And that story has probably helped a lot of people get protected that with life insurance that wouldn't have been protected before. Yeah. So that's wh- what it's about. What do uh what do what do you know PNC focused agents how do they make that transition? So you said borrow somebody else's story if they don't have their own story. Uh how how can they let, let's start from scratch. How hard is it to sell a uh, life insurance policy? I'm, I'm a PNC guy through and through. Right. I started 20 years ago. I've been doing it 20 years. I'm, I'm PNC through and through and through and through. So to me, life is completely, uh, uh, it's a mystery to me. Right. So, so let's use this time to maybe educate me and through educating me, we'll educate the audience as well. But if, if the audience is hearing your story and going, 
I think he's right. I need to change some some uh, some of the things that I do in my agency so I sell life more frequently or it becomes a cornerstone of my agency. The first question I would have is, okay, I, I like what Jack just said, but man, I know nothing about it. How hard is it to learn it and how hard is it to figure it out and how hard is it to start selling it? You just need to know enough to be dangerous. Okay. Right? You know more than the person across the table uh-huh. because you have a life license they don't. Okay. So what I would say in the beginning, hey, my DM was old school. Yeah. He said, I ain't going to do a lot of training. Yeah. Just go, <laughs> just go up figure this up and you'll have to fix them and you'll never do it again. <laughs> right. The right. reason I started a review program uh-huh. is to fix all the things I screwed up, right? <laughs> on your PNC, You're on like, your home and auto. You need an annual I review. I told you that was covered uh, and then I'm in a meeting going, oh, that isn't covered. <laughs> right? So, yeah. right. At so. the annual review, we'll fix it all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. I so uh, I didn't have a lot of training. But I knew enough to ask about life insurance. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. take a lot of training to ask someone, you know, about the most important policy that you offer. Sure. It's, it doesn't take a lot of training to say, Sean, who handles your life insurance? Yeah. Who handles your life insurance? Right. Stay away from yes, no questions. Right. Do you want life insurance? No. Yeah. Right. right. Who handles your life insurance? They only have three answers for you. I don't have any. Uh-oh. Yeah. Don't, don't say that to me. Yeah. Uh, radar, right? Yeah, yeah. You're going to say you have it at work. And I'm going to say, great, that's your secondary policy. Right. Who has your primary policy? Right. Are they going to say, I have it through another insurance company? Right. I'm going to say, great. One of the services we provide in this agency, and by the way, it's free, uh-huh. is a free review of your existing life insurance. Yeah. I find that people don't have what they think they have. Yeah. I have had people tell me they have a 30-year term, it's a 10-year term. Yeah. They tell me it's perm and it's term. Yeah. Right? They, tell, they swear it's not actually in a policy, and it is. Yeah. Right? So, so it does take a lot of training to say who handles your life insurance. Sure. And then when you're talking to clients and they start asking you questions that you – that you don't have to have the answer to, don't say something that just sounds good. Yeah. They're going to respect you to say, you know, I really don't know the answer to that. Yeah. But guess what, Sean? I have a wealth of knowledge at my fingertips. Mm-hmm. I have a wealth of knowledge at my fingertips. I'm going to call someone to get that answer for you. Either yeah. the life company that I'm representing, right. or I know this Jack Jameson guy that's right. always running his mouth on, on Facebook. Right. I'll text him. I just became yeah, friends I with just, him. I'll, <laughs> I'll text him. or I'll, yeah. I, You know, I have the Jack's Two Life Crew Facebook yeah. which is all about life insurance. I'll go in there and ask the question, and somebody will right. answer it. Yeah, yeah. So just just enough that you care and you realize you want to start doing better with life and you want to make a bigger difference in the world, yeah. then just start asking. Yeah. And then there's... Whatever life insurance company you're representing, mm-hmm. they have all kinds of training. Sure. Go seek out some training. Yeah. Right? Or just every time you sell a policy, you're going to learn something. You're going to get better, and you're going to yeah. get better, and you're going to get better, and you're yeah. going to get better. And when you do this long enough, you're going to pay out your first death claim. And then you're going to have your story. Yeah. And then, unfortunately, you're going to have a second story, and you're going to have a third story. Yeah. I paid out 10 death claims in 11 years as an agent. Wow. I paid out on my own beautiful sister-in-law who died of cancer at age 30, and wow. my brother-in-law, Michael, a widow with three boys, right? Wow. So I've seen it, man, in every situation. Yeah. I had a lady drown in a hot tub. Wow. I had a guy die in a freaky hunting accident, right? Wow. So I got my stories. Yeah. Uh, and I always tell everybody, everybody has a story, Sean. What's your story? Yeah, yeah. And it's okay to share your story. And it's funny, when I'm up speaking, I'll see people in the crowd, and sometimes somebody's just absolutely losing it. Yeah. I mean, they're just sobbing. Yeah, yeah. Man or woman. And I'm like, this is really hitting close to home. Yeah, they have a story, clearly. They'll come up to me after Mm -hmm. my talk, Mm -hmm. because I guess they feel that connection, right? Sure. And they want to share their story. I lost my wife to cancer. I lost a kid in a car accident. I lost whoever. And and I'll look, and and they have tears in their eyes and and down running down their cheeks when they tell me, and I say, are you sharing that story with your clients? Right. Like, oh, no, I couldn't without crying. Cry. Even, even better. <laughs> exactly. Even better. Exactly. Right? Because when you got a tear and they got a tear, yeah, yeah. it's over. Yeah, right. If you can't close it now, right. you need to get out of the business. Right, right. Right? It, right. it sort of closed itself. Yeah. So it's okay. Quit. Every, it's funny. I was talking in Texas a few weeks ago, and there's like 300 people in the audience. And I says, raise your hand if you've never been affected by death. Mm-hmm. And not one person could raise their hand, young mm-hmm. or old. Mm-hmm. We've all been affected, mm-hmm. and we all have life stories that we don't realize we have yeah. till we sort of dig down deep, and we're like, oh, we do yeah. have life stories. Yeah. My dad passed away. He left us with no life insurance. Yeah. And I remember my mom having to get three jobs to try to make ends meet. Yeah. So I just lost my dad, yeah. and in essence, I just lost my mom because she's never around. Right, because you right? became a latchkey kid. And- right, right. Wow. When I got sold a life insurance policy, somebody had my wife and I sitting next together, and they said, the day you die, Sean you don't want your wife to go get married again to another husband so that she can continue to live the lifestyle that she's living, do you? And, and I was like, 
yeah, that's fine with me. <laughs> I'm like, I, is this is this part of the sales pitch? Because if that's part of the sales pitch, I want my wife to be happy after I'm dead. Absolutely. Go, yeah, I, like, if you're trying to sell me a, a, a big policy so that my wife doesn't have to get remarried, uh, then I don't care. I want her to go get remarried and I want her to be happy. And I felt like the person who was selling the policy was like, oh, crap, Uh-oh. my sales pitch just fell <laughs> apart. Uh-huh. So I don't mean hokey. I really don't mean hokey. I, I mean, how do we take it from... Um, from silly questions like that, which sem- seem silly to me, to really meaty, meaningful conversations where the person goes, I get exactly what you're saying and I want to absolutely buy your product. Right. I was I always say to be a top live writer, you need to become a combination of two things, mm-hmm. bold and sincere. Okay. And you can be as bold as you want to be as long as you're sincere. Right. I said things to people that should have got me punched in the nose. Yeah. But I was very sincere about it. Yeah. I wasn't afraid to ask someone, do you love your family? Yeah. Yes. Of course I do. Okay. Yeah. Then how come you have no life insurance with me? Yeah. Because life insurance is also to be done out of love. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And I wasn't afraid to say that. Okay. But one of the boldest approaches I that I developed in about five years in that mm-hmm. worked really well is if I had a couple sitting in front of me, what's your what's your wife's name, Sean? Natalie. Natalie. So if I have Sean and Natalie sitting in front of me, yeah. right? And, you know, we've went over the home and auto review or we're, we're just sitting down for the first time, however, I'm going to say I sold more life insurance on stats than I did illustrations or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. And I would say, hey, Sean and Natalie, I don't know if you realize this or not, but um, about 7,000 people a day pass away in the United States. Yeah. It's actually a little higher than that, but, okay. you know, I went to LSU, so sure, it takes sure. me an hour and a half to watch 60 minutes. <laughs> okay. So I got to keep things, you know, pretty. So yeah, yeah. about 7,000 people a day pass away in the United States. Yeah. Sean and Natalie, that's about 1.5 million people a year. Yeah. Do you know what all those deaths have in common, Sean and Natalie? And they usually look at each other like. No, we have no idea. They're all untimely. Yeah. <laughs> they, you ever heard of a timely death? Right. right. And he died just the right time. Yeah, right, 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 right. They're all untimely. Yeah. yeah right. You agree with that? Yes. Mm-hmm. I see. Okay. Sean, you don't make it work. You don't make it home from work tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You become one of those 7,000. Yeah. Right? I'm going to turn to Natalie and say, Natalie, what happens next to you and the kids financially? Yeah. When Natalie tries to look at Sean, I'm like, no, no, Natalie. Yeah. He's dead. He's dead. Yeah. You don't get advice from him any longer. Yeah, yeah. Natalie, look at me. Once again, what are you guys going to do financially? Right. Sean tries to talk. Sean, hush. You're dead. You're yeah, dead. I like this. You never get to give your wife advice again. Now right. you hush, Sean. Right, right, right. Natalie, third time. What are you and the kids going to do financially? By that third time, I took it from what if it happens to someone else? Because yeah. see, bad things happen to other people. It's never going to happen to me. Yeah, yeah. I just brought it home in that room to what if it happens to me? And it just hit her that she doesn't, Natalie doesn't get to ask Sean for financial advice anymore, sure, or vice versa. Sure. It just hit Sean that he doesn't get to give his wife advice anymore. Yeah, yeah. Usually they both have a tear in their eye. Right. Women are easy to get tear in their eye. When you get a right, man, right. you know, uh, I love when I was up at Soup Live, yeah. and the women out there are just losing it. But a lot of you men are like, I'm not going to do it. And their yeah, lips are right, quivering, right, you know, right, that type right. of deal. But you're keep, that's keeping it real. Yeah. You know, you got to keep it real with people. Yeah. You got to quit being a word. You know, we're so, we're, we're so afraid of offending people. Yeah. Again, if I offend you, you deserve to be offended yeah. as it relates to, to, to life insurance, yeah. right? And the number one objection I get from everyone on life insurance is the reason they're not bringing it up and selling more of it is I don't want to make people feel uncomfortable. And life insurance makes people feel uncomfortable. You know what I say to that? That's your number one objection. Yeah. Darn That's right, incredible. Darn right, it makes people feel uncomfortable. And right. you have a responsibility right. to make them feel yes. that way. Yeah, and that's part exactly of our right. job description. That's incredible. Yeah. Part of our job description is to have uncomfortable conversations about uncomfortable subjects. Right? That's in all the, lines of business, in though. All lines so of business. so that's the crazy thing. I can't believe that's the number one object objection you hear because that's what a good insurance agent does. A good insurance agent walks into a room and goes, Hey, how would you deal with these things if this happens to it's your, your to your down. business or yeah, your yeah, blah 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 blah? Yeah. You throw metaphorical grenades into the room yeah. and then go, How are you gonna deal with that? See you later. Get comfortable right. with that. Right. Wow, that's incredible. So I tell agents your goal every day is to have as many uncomfortable conversations as I agree. possible. I agree. If you go home to work today, six, seven o'clock tonight, yeah. you get home and you had you made six people feel uncomfortable. Yeah. You had one Heck of a day. Yeah. Because here's what I would say to, to, to people. I would say to my clients, Sean, 
I would rather have an uncomfortable conversation with you right now than a much more uncomfortable conversation with your loved ones after you're gone. Right. Which uncomfortable conversation you'd rather have, agents? Right. With Sean or with Natalie after Sean's gone? Right. Let's, let's have the uncomfortable conversation up front. Right. But about, I read the other day that about 63% of all Americans, or excuse me, 43% of all Americans have no life insurance of any kind, mm. zero. Mm. And their number one reason they don't have it is? No they don't want asked. to talk, oh, really? No one's ever asked. So agents are going, I don't want to make people feel uncomfortable, but the client's saying, well, we don't have it because no one's ever asked. See, and I would think it'd be because I don't want to talk about right. it. You yeah. know, like, I don't want to talk about when I die. No. That's like second or third on the list of why they don't have it. But the number one reason in every survey that people don't have life insurance yeah. is no one's ever asked. Yeah. Because P and L, not all, but a lot of PNC agents are just terrible. Just ignore it. Yeah, they just so ignore it. I have people come up to me at Soup Live afterwards and go, wow, Jack, you know, when I used to be captive, I sold life for achievement clubs for yeah, bonuses. Yeah. Since I've become be grudgingly, I sold. I haven't it, sold yeah. a life policy in four years. Three yeah, that's years. right. That's right. You made me want to do it want again. Want to write life again? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I say, well, then my mission's done here. Yeah. Right? But you got to realize, a, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I did a life policy one time on a millionaire doctor. My commissions. It was a thirty minute. It was a thirty minute meeting. Yeah. My commissions for thirty minutes was eighty thousand dollars. Wow. I always say to agents, how many wow. home and autos would you have to write in 30 minutes to make 80 grand? Right. Could you top that fast? No. Right? So, A, there is money on it, but that aside, yeah. it's, it's the right thing to it's do. It's the right thing. It's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to write life, why do you have your in life insurance license? Mm -hmm. You know, that'd be like me passing the bar, but not, not becoming a lawyer. Yeah. Just to say I did, right? Yeah, right. But not, you know, so, um, it, so you just got to make it a priority in your agency. You literally have to take it from the back of the agency where it's probably at now right? and move it to the front. Yeah, Decorate your office like a life office. And I don't care if it is a cheesy life box or a hundred grand bar or whatever. It's subconscious stuff that gets people extension. Sure. It, it, right? I have a sign on my desk, 8 by 10, that says, my job is to talk, you, talk to you about life insurance. Don't make it my job to tell your family you didn't have any. Yeah, right? I like that. And, and it just gets people extension. Mm -hmm. If I see them look at the sign... They see that it reminds me also to bring it up to them, mm -hmm. and and I tell agents that, you know, spend some of your advertising dollars on life insurance, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, if you're a captive agent, your company's probably spending millions of dollars on advertising home and autos. Right. They're probably spending no money advertising life insurance. Absolutely. So my advertising dollars went to a billboard with the family on it talking about life insurance. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew bump, but a bump, 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 mm -hmm. right? Everybody mm -hmm. knew that as a farmer's agent, I sold home and auto. Mm -hmm. Not everybody knew I sold life insurance. Right. It's on my card. Right. It's on my sign. Right. But I advertised and bought leads of life. I advertised life. I, hell, it looked like life insurance threw up in my office. Yeah. I had life insurance posters and life insurance things sure. and things like that. Um, how good are captive agents at selling life? I've always been an independent agent 20 years. Uh, are I know they. I know they're basically, you know, forced to sell life, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, to hit certain compensation metrics and whatever. But are they good at it? I, I independence. You know, after twenty years, I would say independence uh, of the thousands of agencies that I've met, they focus on 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 PNC, right? Yeah. So they're not great at selling life. Um, on the captive side, would you say they're great at selling life, or are you going? No, they're not. That's why I had to run around the country eighteen times to to get them better at it. Are they good at it or not? I'm finding they're a little better than independent agents. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, because independent agents don't have a lot of incentive to do it. Right. If yeah. they don't feel like it's, if they don't really care, it's the right thing to do, right? Mm -hmm. And if they don't care about leaving money on the table, nobody's going to make an independent agent sure. do anything. Sure, right? right. That's absolutely. But right. as a captive agent. If you want to go to an achievement club, you know, you want that nice trip to Maui or uh -huh. whatever, uh -huh. uh, you want to make certain bonuses, yeah. you got to sell a certain amount of life. So a lot yeah. of them do it because they're they're forced to, but even captive agents aren't that great at it. Yeah. And hence why they created the position for me, head of agent life development, and had me yeah. fly around the country, yeah. and why I'm still flying around the country talking about life. It's yeah. funny, somebody, uh, at Super Live, somebody came up to me from Farm Bureau, region vice president or something. I want to make sure you're still in the frame, so don't scoot oh, too far back. So, yeah. um... Somebody uh, came up to me from Farm Bureau, yeah. and um, they were like, you're good at something most agents are really bad at. I agree. Right? He, Which is the storytelling. Right. You're just good at teaching about life insurance, right? right? And when we're doing a convention, we can find 100 people that are good at writing home and autos that we can plug. Sure, sure. We can't ever find anybody... 
that's good at life insurance yeah. within Farm Bureau or wherever. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, would you want to speak at our next convention yeah. and things like that? Yeah. So, um, so there's a need for life insurance out there. Absolutely. And that's, that's the reason 40 something percent of all America, 40 percent of all Americans have no life insurance. So let me ask. Uh, so the next question, you're absolutely right. There's a need. So um, where do agents go to get this this uh, this training? Where do agents go to get the to learn how to be indoctrinated and do it? So um, on the PNC side, I can go to um, I can uh, I can go to a carrier's uh, production school and learn how to do commercial lines, and I can get indoctrinated on how to do commercial lines really really well and speak the commercial lines language and all that kind of stuff. Where does an agent go on the life side to get? To learn, is it? You, you mentioned. Do you have a Facebook group? Two Live Crew is that? Jack's Two Live Crew. Jack's Two Live Crew. Is that where they go? Uh, where do they go to get this great answers to all their questions? Great. Um, Jack's Two Live Crew. I do what's called Jack's Inner Crew, mm -hmm. where I do one to two webinars a month. Okay. Uh, it's a subscription based uh -huh. thing. Uh -huh. uh, I try to make it affordable for everyone. It's like ninety nine dollars sure, a month. Sure, sure. Um, and you get uh, a couple hours of me a month. The reason I started this, Sean. Yeah was I had an agent come up to me one time and he goes, this is like the sixth time I've heard you speak. And I yeah. go, I'm sorry, you need to get out more, eh? But that's fine. Yeah. He goes, but every time I hear you speak, my life production goes like this for yeah. like a year, okay, six got months. It, got it. Then, yeah. if I could just hear you speak monthly, yeah. monthly, a couple of times a month, I'd stay motivated about life insurance. Yeah. Well, I, so if you could you come in my office once a month, right, and, yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and motivate us? And yeah. I thought, I wish I could. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. But here's the way that I can get into to thousands of offices across the United States. Yeah. I can do webinars. Yeah. Right? And then also, when I'm done with the webinar, it's in the store where they have a copy of that webinar mm -hmm. to watch as many times as they want. Sure. Or use it to help train their staff. Or learn the story right? better. Or to to parrot the story. Yeah, I had a guy text me yesterday. He goes, Fourth time me and my office has watched your last webinar. Uh -huh. We took different notes every single time. Yeah. Right? That type of deal. Yeah. So there's that kind of stuff out there. Um, and then a good place to go is your carriers. Uh -huh. Right? So if you're representing uh, Banner Life, uh -huh. you're representing Forsters, AIG, yeah. Mutual of Omaha, any yeah. of those, they all have trainings. Yeah. Now that I'm independent, yeah. um, I get... My email gets blown up mm -hmm. from the live companies that I'm representing for mm -hmm. webinars are coming forward, question and yeah. answer sessions, yeah. go here for these training videos. Yeah. It's out there if you want to find it. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I'd start. Um, let's talk about now that I'm going independent, So, or now that I've gone independent. Uh, so you were 20, 20 years at Farmers? Yes. Uh, and you're now independent. You've decided to go independent. You ran a district. It, was, it sounds to me like this amazing career on the farmer side. Um, as much as you want to say, what, what made you want to switch? Um, why? It was a tough decision, right? Yeah. It's funny when I did my, uh, resignation letter that I, that I submitted, uh, first uh, of August, uh, I sit in front of the computer for three hours before I could push the button. I bet. I cried. I, I bet. called my wife. We cried together. I bet. We were like, dude, farmers has given me an amazing lifestyle. Yeah. I, I've, I've been to places and done things I never thought I'd, I'd get to do in a lifetime. Right. Uh, we went from 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 living on credit cards to to making more a month than we used to make a year. Yeah. Right. Right. And uh, it was very tough. But the main reason I decided to leave, a couple of reasons. A, let's start on the life side because we all know that's going to be my priority. Yeah. Right. It's always been my dream to have, to have access. To the best live products, products on the market, yeah, yeah. not the ones I happen to have, yeah. but the best live products on the market. Yeah. I now have that. Yeah. I'm, I'm now writing life that I didn't even know existed. I wow. didn't even know to, to, to six weeks ago there was a 40 year term. Yeah. I didn't even know there was a five million dollar <laughs> policy you could do without a medical exam. Yeah. I mean, wow. it's just opened a whole new world for me. Yeah. Not only are their commission double or triple, uh -huh. but just having access to the products. Yeah. So, so I wanted to be able to do that. Okay. And then on the PNC side. Same thing. Yeah. You know, when you're captive, right, and you go, you can make a dang good living. I know a lot of people make a good can. living at being I captive. I got lots of great friends. I made a good great living being living. captive. Yep. Successful people, Sean, are going to be successful no matter what they do. Absolutely. Captive, independent, yep. unsuccessful yep. people, you could set them up the best you could, and they're going to they're going to they're going to fail. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So, but for me, again, as captive, you're my neighbor. Yeah. And you want me to quote you? Yeah. So sometimes it's a little embarrassing because I would go, 
I know just by your style of home, the cars you drive, your driving record, I'm not even going to be competitive. Yeah. So I have to say in a nice way over the fence in the backyard, I don't really want to quote your stuff. Well, why aren't you in the business? Yeah, right? right, right. And so, and then if I do quote you mm-hmm. and I'm triple, mm-hmm. that's even more embarrassing. Yeah. So I thought, man, it would be nice when my neighbor, my friend wants me to quote them, that I have several companies to yeah. quote them through. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm probably going to find a place for them. Yeah. Right? You're not, you can't be all things to all people. Yeah. But just in the last six weeks, yeah. we weren't even supposed to start selling on October the 1st. Yeah. You know, we sold 80000 in premium in September by accident. Yeah. And just in the short. In PNC premium, PNC. not like. So premium. just in the last few weeks, I mean, our closing ratios, you know, it used to be 10, 15%, 20 at the highest. Yeah. It's now 85, 90%. That's incredible. Same. So I also want to. That's not normal, by the way. That's not normal. (laughs) We've just been very blessed uh, and that type of deal. But um, I want to be able because if you're good and people realize you're good, they they want to go with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but if you don't have a product, yeah, right. It's one thing if I'm 200 more a year than you. Yeah, I I can sell that. Sure, sure. But if I'm 2,000 more than you, it gets. I'm not usually that good. Yeah, right. And and that type of deal. And then you know. I'm captive when you take a big rate increase. Mm-hmm. All companies take rate increases. Yeah, sure, you know, sure. Captive, independent, whatever. But when you take a big rate increase, you know, and all ages have gotten this call. Mm-hmm. Sean, you're the best agent I've ever had. You know what's coming next. Right. But I love you to death, but I can't, I can't do these rates anymore. Yeah. So as a captive, you usually just have to let them walk out the door. Yeah. And say, hey, if things get better, I'll call you. Yeah, yeah. But as a captive, I, as an independent, I like the idea that, hey, be, let me shop for you. Yeah. Because nobody likes shopping insurance. Right, right, they hate it. Right. Let me shop for you. Right. I have access to 20 other PNC companies. Let me see if I can find you a better rate. Right, right. right? And so hopefully you can, instead of losing that lifelong client, you kept them. You may have to have switched them from one company to another, yeah. but it's better than walking out the door. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you left uh, and you're happy so far? So far cool? so good, my friend. I, I've been so busy, Sean. It's like I've got 20 years of experience, and it's still been like trying to take – Take a drink from a fire hose, which yeah. you warned yeah, me of. I did. Um, yeah. And I, I told my wife last night when I went to bed, I said, I want to go to bed again without feeling overwhelmed. Yeah. I, I feel like every, at the end of every day, I didn't have enough hours in the day. Yeah. Because although I know you know what sewer and drain coverage means, right. I know what HO1 means right. and all that, I'm having to learn all these different companies' products. Yeah. And I'm having to learn all these life insurance company their products. Yeah, you're busy. How their billing works and all that. But yeah. that's good. Yeah. Because education, uh, knowledge is power. Yeah. Knowledge yeah. is power. Yeah. And my goal every day of my life, if I go to bed at night, I, have, I didn't learn something that day. Yeah. That wasn't a good day. Yeah. So it's made me, those who can do and those who can't teach, yeah. and I've been teaching for a long time. <laughs> I, and you so know, you're I, wondering I like, if you yeah, can still do it. I still do you're it. Like, can I still so do it? So it's been nice to get down in the trenches again yeah, yeah. and to be sitting at the kitchen table talking about life insurance, yeah. to, to just quoted somebody last night yeah. from my house that we literally – Save them three thousand dollars a year, which is not normal. Right? Uh, oh, uh, it's not abnormal though. And these we days. and and we doubled their coverages. Yeah. So I was able to call them proudly and go, "Hey, great news! I just took your liability from one hundred, three hundred to two fifty, five hundred. Yeah. Right. And saved you a ton of money. And I just saved you three grand. So you guys need to go on a cruise later this year. No, 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 Sean. Oh, Wrong. you need to buy you life insurance. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. Don't leave okay, money. Take on me. Table. Take me. I just freed up three thousand. Take us for all. You. Yeah, I freed I up three thousand. I just freed 000. up three thousand dollars for you. Yeah, I need another thousand of it back. back. So I want about half that back. Okay. I'm going to be a nice guy and let you keep fifty percent. But we're going to go do something fun on it. Like yeah, you just yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. But we're going to take that other fifty percent. Okay. And we're going to put it in life insurance for your okay. family. You can't, you can't tell me you can't afford it now, Sean. Ah. I just found you a life budget. You're very much welcome. Oh, damn. Yeah, see what happened there? Never give away premium. If I'm going to save you money, the next conversation is, I we're going to take 50% of, it back. of yeah. that. I'm going to take half of it back. You take the other half and do something fun with it. Wow. But we're going to take the other half. It's free life insurance yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah. It's free life insurance yeah. for you. So because, you know, one of the objections that we get as agents is a client says, I can't afford it. Mm-hmm. People afford what they want to afford. Yeah. People will tell you they can't afford life insurance, but they have a bass boat with you. They have an yeah. RV with yeah, you. That's right. They have his and her Harleys with you. Right. And right. And right. 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 People afford what they want, what they to. want to afford. Yeah. And I will help find you a life budget. Yeah. We have a policy in this agency to fit into anybody's budget. Let's sit down and find a way to fit life insurance to your budget. Okay. You didn't go independent in order to more effectively find the budget to sell more life. That wasn't cognitive. You, you weren't 
consciously thinking that. That was were part you? of it. That were was part you? of it. Because uh, okay. I because I used that trick when I was an agent, and then I taught my agents that trick. Yeah. When you save somebody money, don't give it all away. Yeah. Don't give now it all back. they have no excuse not to do life insurance. Yeah. Right. So I, in back of my mind, when I was down at Soup Live and talking mm-hmm. to a lot of mm-hmm. independent mm-hmm. agents, and they were telling me, and they were captain from different companies, mm-hmm. and they go. Mm-hmm. You know, Jack, I, I, I save people a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I thought to myself, I heard that a lot more with independence than yeah. I did captive. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, that's more money for life insurance. That's right. That was part of the, the thought process. Yeah. You know, I always say life insurance is state of mind, either you're in yeah. it or not. Yeah. And I'm not talking about life insurance Tuesdays or life insurance awareness month or something like that. I'm always in the life insurance state of mind. Yeah. So a lot of my decisions, personal and business, yeah. is, is, is around life insurance. Yeah. You know, and yeah. when you're talking to me as a client and you got to, you got a problem. We don't sell anything for a living. Uh-huh. What we do for a living is we provide solutions to people's problems. Yeah, you got to get good at asking questions, at fact finding. Mm-hmm. They will tell you what they need, mm-hmm. and a lot of times is what they need is a life policy. Yeah, that policy fits that. Oh, I got a partner, and I love my partner, but I can't stand his spouse. Mm-hmm. If he passes away, I don't want to become partners with his spouse. Yeah. You know how we can fix that? Yeah, through a buy sell agreement. You know how we're going to fund the buy sell agreement right. with a life policy. Huh. Right. Yeah. You know, man, if I passed away, I'm the head chef and I own this restaurant. Right. My wife's going to be in a world of hurt. Right. Well, let's, do you have a key person policy on you? Yeah. That if you pass away, your your wife or your business partner has money to recruit another you. Right. 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 Because they're going to have to recruit another right. you. Right. 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 So I'm always, I know I drive my kids crazy. You know, if I'm watching the news and somebody passed away, I hope they had life insurance. Yeah. We go by a car accident. I watch a sad movie like Beaches. <laughs> I get angry at the end if they don't, they didn't explain whether she had life insurance or not. Yeah. And my, you know, it's funny. My kids have heard it and heard it and yeah, heard yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, And you, sometimes you think your kids aren't listening. Yeah. Sometimes you hope they're not listening. Right, right. You know, every now and then when I'm watching my LSU Tigers and right, my putting right, out. Right, right, um, But uh, now I hear my kids talking to people about life insurance yeah. Using the same exact lines they've heard me use for twenty right. years. They're parroting and everything they've heard. Full from circle, yeah. and that's that's when you really become a proud parent. So, what is your parents? Uh, excuse me. What is your wife and kids? Because I know you work with your kids. It's very much a family thing. Uh, what are what did they think when you said, "Guys, it's it's time we go independent"? Um, my one daughter has been bugging me to go independent for over a year. Okay. Particularly with CIA. Okay. Because she was in their group and loved what they were about. Oh, okay. Got it. And I said, so she's been wanting to go independent. Yeah. And I go, honey, it doesn't look good for the DM's daughter to go independent. No, yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> so can you just tank in there? Yeah. And then we Because for the last two years as a DM, although I love being a district manager. Sure. I decided that I wanted to be back in the game again. Is so, the DM job a dreamy job? That That's my question. It is. It is as far as inspiring and helping people. Okay. I mean, a DM said I had the most pathetic resume I ever seen, but still sure. got me in for an interview. Yeah. He saw something in me that changed my life forever. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, right? So, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. part of it's great. Yeah. The, the hardest part of it is this. You have agents that you care more about their agencies than they care about their agents. I see. And... You care about their success more than they the care they about do. their success. I see the yeah. potential in... Yeah. in and I knew this would drive me crazy because I've always ran at a high level, uh-huh, right? Uh-huh. When I was a garbage man, uh-huh. I was the best eight garbage man they had, yeah, right? Yeah. Look at me, right? So I've always ran at a high level. I've always, and so I've never, I've, I've always wanted that. Yeah. And I can't comprehend people that don't want that. I'm with you. Right? So I always knew, I had people that told me, you'd be a great district manager. Mm-hmm. What's going to drive you crazy is you wanting more for them than they're wanting for them. Yeah, yeah. Not everybody's going to run at that level, no yeah, matter. Yeah. And I've come to the conclusion that there's agents out there, God bless them. Bless Down south, we say, bless your heart. Yeah. Bless their heart. If God himself walked into their office and said, I need you to start writing more, yeah. God would leave and they'd say, what does God know? And they'd get back, <laughs> you know, I mean, seriously. And yeah. I certainly wasn't yeah, God. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. So that was the hardest part. Yeah. Uh, now, the rewarding part on the flip side of yeah, that yeah. was taking an agent that, that you made them realize the potential. Yeah, they, I took agents that were here yeah. and, and took them to here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so that's, so it's it's the flip side. Somebody asked me, it, you know, a, about a year ago. Okay. You've been a, you've been a farmer's agent. Yep. You've been a company employee. Yep. You've been a district manager. Yep. What did you like least most? Oh, I said, okay, no, yeah. I'm not, I liked them all. Yeah. Enjoyed sure, them all. Sure. I they said, just all had unique challenges. Certain amount of bull crap as an agent, certain amount of bull crap as a DM, yep. and a certain amount of bull crap as a company employee. Just sure, different crap, sure, right? Sure, sure, and, and But on the flip side, a lot of things rewarding about being an agent, yeah. a lot of things being rewarding about a company employee, yeah. 
and they're not thinking about reward by district manager. And you that has nothing to do with farmers. That has everything to do, to do with, with every single scenario. It could yeah, be you scenario. fill in the blank organization and it's going to be the exact same way. Going through all those things is going to make me a much better agent this time around. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I got to see people doing it at a high level. Yeah. And 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 I saw and and then people not doing it at a high level yeah. and just remembering what the successful people were doing. Yeah. Right. Look, my I, some of my best stuff I have I've stolen from someone else. Yeah. I know people have stolen from me. Sure, sure. My philosophy is if you steal something twice, it's yours, Sean. So, <laughs> it, so if so, I'm faith, you got to give me credit twice. Yeah. The third time you came up. Yeah. With that, okay. Right? I got it. But at so, least you got to give so me credit I, twice. I, I, I sh- it's not plagiarism the third time around. Yeah, well, you know, just like anybody else, I see myself <laughs> quoted on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes they'll give me credit. Sometimes they yeah, won't, yeah. which is fine. Yeah, you and don't I, care. And I like to give them crap because I still too. Yeah, yeah. And I'll just put. I'll comment. That is amazing. I wish I would have thought of that. Right. You know, right, 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 uh-huh, right, right, uh-huh, right. that type of deal. Taylor, Taylor Dobby always says uh, he, he steals what I say and he puts right. it in his uh, in his talk track. And I'm like, that's fine. That doesn't bother me at all. Right. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. So, uh, so I, I, I derailed the conversation a little bit with the okay. DM question. So the family saying, I want to go independent. And you were headed down that road. Your daughter had wanted to do it for a year. Uh, my wife was scared. Was your wife like, what hey, are my- you doing, Jack? This is insane. My wife got uncomfortable. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, n- nothing great comes from comfort zones. Right. But she got uncomfortable with our life. Yeah. And she says, at age 57, yeah. do you really want to start over again? Yeah. You know, that type of deal? Yeah. And, uh, and I told her, I says, honey, I'd put you at 49, by the way, no, Jack. No, thank you. That's, I'm not that. joking. I, yeah. Like, that shocks me. 57 yeah. shocks me. I appreciate me. that. Uh, I said, honey, Let's say I work another 15 years, mm-hmm. you know, or more. Who mm-hmm. knows? Mm-hmm. I said, um, I always teach when I fly around the country to really enjoy what you're doing. You should be going to the office every day doing what you want to do, not what you have to do. Yeah. I want to start going back to the office doing what I want to do, not what I have to do. Right. And what I want to do is sell life insurance at a high level. Yeah. What I want to do is even make a bigger difference in the world and help people. Yeah. Right? And to be able to work with two of my sons mm-hmm. – uh, and all three of my daughters, mm-hmm. and to work with my wife. Yeah. What a blessing. Yeah, very what good. What a blessing. Yeah. And, you know, I'm very blessed. My kids all have my work ethic, uh-huh. and they have their mama's brains. Yeah. So it's a deadly combination. That's, uh, right? that's good. And, and, and thankfully, her looks, too. But, yeah. um, you know, that type of deal. But it's it's, it's fun. And yeah. it's been a it was a was it a scary pushing that button? Yeah. Being the guy at Farmers? Yeah. 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 It was scary pushing that button. Yeah. But you know what? It's okay. So are people calling you up going, what did you What did you do, Jack? Why? Where did you go? Why did you go? How did you do it? What's going on, Jack? Why? The, Why, The reason Jack? I Why? waited to my very last day with farmers to post on Facebook, yeah. I have, you know, 5,000 Facebook friends. It's a beautiful post, by the way. Right, right. I you. almost cried. Right, it was right, like, right. I almost cried how right, beautifully right. you worded your your 20-year career. I looked very, I was very careful. It's very that. professional. Very professional. I would not be sitting here today if farmers had given me a chance 20 years ago, yeah. I will always be eternally grateful for farmers yeah. to get me to this point. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But sometimes you outgrow people and you outgrow situations. Sure, sure. And I sort of felt like I'd done everything and proven everything I could with farmers. Yeah. It was time to move on. Yeah. But it was scary pushing that button and it was hard and, and all that. But it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. You, it's never too late to start over and it's never too late to do something that you really want to be doing. Yeah. And I... Uh, I had already decided I was going to go back to being an agent. And mm-hmm. I was looking at a very, very large uh, farmer's agency in, in Colorado to buy. Mm-hmm. And I got invited to Soup Live. Mm-hmm. And, and, and don't get me wrong. Man, farmer's family is awesome. And, and I went yeah. to so many different events. And, and I know so many people. Yeah, but so I, many I, great agents. I right? just love the feeling at Soup Live. I, what I loved about it was there were people there from captive. Mm-hmm. Independent people, mm-hmm. health people, life only people, live yeah. people, disability. Yeah. But they all came together to try to help each other and learn from yeah. each other, yeah. right? Yeah. And I just really liked that because I never really thought about seriously about going independent until I went to Soup Life. Yeah, really? Yeah. It was that It was that quick. You know what? God's always two steps ahead of us. It was always. that quick, really? Yeah. And I went to Soup Live, and, and something just clicked. Well, that. you saw us all screwing around, and you were going, how are they getting away with all this screwing around? Ma- yeah. Maybe they're not, they're the, not all that buttoned up. It's probably the Uber ride with with the, with the great Sean on the way back to the airport that no, you still that only half on. By the I way. do, I do. But uh, well, I didn't say to get the black Uber <laughs> thing. I said let's well, get the I, cheap know, one. I, I figured that's the I'll way you roll. I'll give you half of the cheap one. I, I, <laughs> I figured you wanted to be in the Escalade, yeah, right, not the right, Prius. Right, right, so right. I just you know made a shot there. I, well, I wanted to 
But I literally went there and I loved what it was about and just and I started picking brains of independent agents, a lot of former right. farmers agents, a lot of former state farm agents, right. the pros and cons right. and that kind of stuff. And I just started thinking seriously about it. So when I, I, I emailed my uh, daughters and I said, hey, when we get when I get home, we really need to have a serious discussion. Yeah. So then I started getting serious and reached out to Taylor. Yeah. And we started getting serious, came down here and spoke yeah. and yeah. Uh, to, took some people down here to Rex and yeah. Yeah. to yourself. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, no regrets, my friend. Life's too short to have regrets. Yeah. Yeah. This way, man. All the way. Well, it All sounds like way. you've just had like uber success ever since making the the decision. And and I expect that out of you. Like I, I fully believe that you won't not write a hundred thousand dollars in written premium every single month, just month after month after month after month after month. You'll be on the you'll be on the track of a ten million dollar agency That's in no what time at all. Our goal once we get our processes and systems in place, our goal yep. is a hundred thousand a month. Yep. Um I, I'm riding life at a high level. Yep. Uh, uh and, and, and that type of deal. Do you wanna say how you're doing that or do you Dude, that, that's just, uh, I, I bought some uh, life leads. Yeah. And it, they got to be quality leads. It yeah. can't be, oh, I was trying to get to the next level of angry birds. Well, that is one of my uh, questions is like, how are you filling your pipeline right now? Right. Uh, are you are you buying life leads or how are you filling your I'm pipeline? I'm buying a few life leads, but okay. just going through people that, that I know and yeah. I used to know yeah. and and uh, some old clients, yeah. and, you know, yeah. that aren't with farmers yeah, any longer. Yeah, they left and, a long time and ago. And that type of deal. And they're like, hey, you wrote my life 15 years ago, mm -hmm. but a lot has changed in my life yeah. in the last 15 years. Yeah. And, uh, and that's always tell agents when it comes to life insurance, don't be one and done agents. Yeah. When you write a life policy on someone, your job's not over, your, your job's just begun. Oh, okay. So I'm going back to that well of people that I wrote life to 15, 20, 10 years ago. Yeah. And now we're sitting, I'm, I'm doing a review with them over the phone or in person, yeah. and we're realizing that, hey, since they bought that $250,000 life policy 10 years ago, they've got three more kids. Right. That's more college. Right. Uh, they went from working for someone else to owning their own business. Right. They went from renting a house to owning a home. Yeah. And so life insurance needs change. Yeah. Yeah. And we got to keep up with that. Yeah. So that's been a lot of my success is just going back through that well again and, and saying, hey, Sean, I wrote life on you 18 years ago. Yeah. Have you had a review since then? Yeah. No, my agent's never even called me on it. You know, that type of deal. Yeah. I'm going to go a different direction. Are you a Colorado guy now or are you going to go back to Wyoming? Or no, we what, love what's Colorado. the plan? You're, you're, you're uh, going to be uh, a. Hey, Wyoming's. Great place to raise family. Yeah. Great raise the, 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 the values there. Yeah. The people are absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, the weather's a lot colder. Yeah. It's very windy, uh, that type of deal. And we still have three kids in Casper that work for me remotely. Yeah. We are setting up a – I just got an office a for location. a second location yeah. in Casper. Yeah. But um, – we love Colorado. We love the weather. We love the yeah. people yeah. We, uh, and that type of deal. So, no, we're here to stay. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I just took my district office and turned it into JWR Insurance Group office. Mm -hmm. So I even got my uh, mm -hmm. same office in mm -hmm. Fort Collins. Mm -hmm. My two daughters who work for, with me closely, they both live here. Yeah. They love Colorado. Yeah. Uh, no, so I think we're here to stay. Okay, cool. So I retire. Um, who knows then? Yeah, right. Uh, in 15 years, right? Yeah, 15 years, maybe. <laughs> and, you know, I, I'm not the guy that's going to sit yeah, on the front porch with plaid out. shorts and black socks up to here yelling at kids to get right, up my lawn. Right, You know, so I I'm, don't see you being that yeah, guy. So. Tell me about uh, uh, future speaking engagements. Uh, you're still running around the nation speaking, right? Yeah, in fact, next week I'm going down to a farmer's uh, uh, district in mm -hmm. Temple, Texas, mm -hmm. that, I, that I taught at, that I, I spoke out about uh, four weeks ago. Uh -huh. And she comes up to me and says, now you gave them the want to. Mm -hmm. I, you got their attention. Yeah. She said, would you come back down, let them digest this in about a month, yeah. and do workshops on how to. Yeah. So now I'm going to do workshops all day on how to do them. Okay. Once I get your attention on the how to, now I yeah. can show you that you want to, now I can show you how to. Yeah. So I'm going down there to speak. I've got two or three other speaking gigs it. lined up. And I love it. I love doing so it. So you're still speaking. Yes. So speaking, running a, an agency with the family. And uh, and writing a ton of life, man. Just it's, it's incredible. It's 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 been a whirlwind, and it's it's amazing. It's and incredible. We, uh, we're looking forward to our future. What else can you tell us about life insurance? Just do it, my friends. Just do it. Just do it. Make it a priority instead of an afterthought. Yeah. If you'll make it a because if it's an afterthought for you, yeah, it's an afterthought for the clients. Yeah. If, if is it the clients walking out the door, you're like, oh, by the way, I do oh, life one insurance. More thing. They're gonna go, oh, by the way, I'm not interested. <laughs> Right. Yeah. If you bring it to the front of that conversation, yeah. whereas I want to talk to you about the most important policy that offers an insurance agent. Yeah. You know, there's not even a close second. Yeah. So let's talk about that now. That's a, that's a fun. You know, you've 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 dropped so much gold in this conversation. Like, if people, I always listen to these things on like you know double speed just to like get through the hour conversation or the hour and a half conversation. But this seems like one of those conversations that you need to almost slow down and, and well, like half me. speed it. Yeah. Especially <laughs> for you, but like half speed it and just go, did you just hear what he just said? Like that's, 
an amazing one-liner that's going to increase your close ratio in life by, you know, 5%. And if you use the 15 one-liners that you've dropped in this podcast so far, I mean, I think the close ratio in life goes up dramatically, right? Uh, can you just, one more thing. Can you tell me about how you've taught these courses or, or, or been on stage and you've taught people across the United States about, you know, the desire to do life insurance. Can you tell me about some of the success stories about where not, not I, I don't want to hear the stories about indemnification, but the success stories where the agent comes up to you and is like, Jack, I implied, I, 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 I um, I did everything you told me to do. And now I am a killer life agent myself. Can you tell us those stories? I, I get those on a daily basis. Yeah. I, I, I get texts that said, before I heard you speak, I wrote two life policies years. Now I'm doing 50. Wow. Before I heard you speak, I was doing 50. Now I'm doing 100. Wow. Before you spoke, I never wrote a life policy. Right. And I get shared all the time. And it's really rewarding on Jack's Two Life Crew yeah. Facebook group to see people saying you know, th- those kinds of things. And then I, I also love the stories. Jack, I heard you speak. I went that afternoon, met with the client, wrote life insurance on them. That client just passed away. And I saw what that money did for that family. Yeah. And if I hadn't heard you that day, yeah. again, again, guys, that domino effect. Yeah. One good thing leads to another good thing. Yeah. And I always say that when you hear somebody speak or you hear a great podcast, mm-hmm. Troy Korsgarden uses this one. Troy's great. I'm going to steal this from him. Yep. Uh, the 72 hour rule. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, down south, I love the south, right? That's where I'm from. They're always fixing to get ready to do something, right? <laughs> I'm fixing to get ready to yeah. start making life insurance a yeah. priority. I'm yeah. fixing to get ready, that type of deal. Yeah. Uh, you got to quit fixing to get ready. Yeah. And you just got to do it. It's time to sell your first policy. It, it, it's time to do it. Sell your yeah. first policy, pull that Band-Aid off, yeah. uh, stumble and bumble through it. I remember the first time I presented a, 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 v, a variable life policy. Uh-huh. It, it was horrible. Yeah. I, I asked the guy for like 3000 a month, right? Yeah. And I couldn't answer any of his questions. Yeah. I bumbled and stumbled through the presentation. I, I couldn't explain the illustrations. He goes, what does that line mean? And I go, your guess is as good as uh, mine. Yeah. Literally 45 minutes of me bumbling, stumbling around. He goes, sounds good. Let's do it. And I went, Really? <laughs> <laughs> and I remember I had a moment there, Sean, and the moment was this. I just got this guy to say yes to a $3,000 a month life policy. I don't even know what the hell I'm doing. Right. When I get good at this, yeah. wait, what happens? Right, exactly. So we all got to start from somewhere, and you're going to yeah. bumble and stumble your yeah. way through. Yeah. But then you're going to get better and better and better and better. And then one day you got Sean's two life crew or something. Right, it doesn't right, quite right. have the ring right. to it. No, but, it doesn't. Uh, uh, that type of deal. No, it doesn't. Plus, that's just an offensive name to me. I, I'm walking away from this podcast offended by your Facebook group's name. <laughs> that's kidding. from the old rap group. In the it is very group. old. Yes, Some I know. Get it. So, yeah, I know. I know exactly what it is. I wanted to do a rap video to announce that. Oh, boy. With the gold the, chain and the hat. I'm and my glad wife's you did. like, nobody wants to see you rap. And I go, oh, no, no, no. Everybody wants to see me aye, rapping. Aye, aye. Aye, aye, aye. Um, who, are some other, uh, who are some other people you respect in the industry? Obviously, Troy Coors Garden. Troy's great. He's top of the line. Uh, David Sewell. Yeah. Uh, a big, 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 big. Might be the largest farmer's agent now down okay. in Texas. I don't know him. Uh, uh, he's in Houston. Okay. Uh, which is a tough market, yeah. as you yeah. know. And he's, you know, been agent of the year many, many, many times. Yeah. And, uh, and um, uh, so there's a lot of farmer's people in the business. You know, it's funny. I got hooked up with, with uh, Ben Reader on the East Coast uh, yeah. on the left side. He was and great. He's so- great. You know, I heard him speak. I had no idea who the guy was. Before the day. You had heard him speak before? No, no. Oh, okay. He spoke the day before I did in life. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. and when he was throwing around the numbers, he throwed around it. Then uh, the next day after I spoke, we got together, and, you know, Ben was like, man, that was a great talk. And I go, well, I love your systems and processes. Yeah. He goes, well. Let's marry this. He says, it. if we could marry this. So I hooked up with him, and he's taught me a lot. Yeah. I mean, just on, because... Being captive, I was limited on the live products yeah, that I had. Yeah, yeah. Now, there's live products, as I said earlier, I didn't even know existed. Yeah, right. So I, I've been learning a lot from Ben and things like that. If, if if we could call in Ben right now, would he be like, oh, yeah, Jack, you got to stop calling me as often probably, as you're calling me? Probably. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. I've been doing this at a high level. That He's first like, week and I was ready to go, I wrote like six live policies while sitting in front of my TV watching football. Yeah. And I'm texting him through all the live policies. What about this, Ryder? Does that mean what I think it means and all this? And I must have texted that man. 12, 15 times on Saturday and probably another 8 to 10 on Sunday. He must have been like, he, oh, no, I know. my gosh. He's, he probably was, yeah. but he's very, very good at not showing it. Yeah, right. Very good at right, not showing it. Right. He's been, I, I bug him a lot. Yeah. And I said, hey, once I get this down, you're going to have something. I'm just trying to learn all this so that I, you know, I talk to you about the right product that's for you. Because I live by three rules when it comes to life insurance. Yeah, yeah. Right policy, yeah. right client, right reasons. Okay. 
Not what's best for me in my pocketbook. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the best life policy for Sean and yeah, Natalie. Yeah, you uh, told me the right things, or you yeah. told me the things that I needed to know to make sure I got uh, you the right policy. Some people are term people. Some people are permanent people. Yeah, yeah. Some people are combo people. Yeah. It's not a one-size-fits-all when it comes to life insurance, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's why you need to have as many many access to as many different policies as possible, yeah. and you need to have the knowledge to help people. Okay, I got two more questions for you. Sure. Uh Personal board of directors. Who's on Jack's personal board of directors? I always say everybody should have like an inner circle of people. They call up and go, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think about that? Who's who's on Jack's personal board of directors? Uh, Jared Sell, who is a, uh, a a farmer's DM here in Denver, okay. who's very successful, yep. uh, very successful. I, I, re- I reached out to him a lot. Yeah. Uh, he was trying to get me to buy a couple of agencies in his district. He must have thought you were crazy for leaving. Thought I was crazy. Yeah. Pretty much told I, me I, so. I've bumped into Jared like on social media and stuff. So, yeah. But he must he pretty have, much. I mean, he, you know, he what, must like, you what I like about Jared is he shoots it straight, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, Rick Newby. Okay. Who is a farmer's legend? Okay. Rick Newby was a, a a top farmer's agent and a and a top farmer's DM, mm-hmm. and I reach out to him all the time. Was or is? Is okay. Got it. Uh, down in Oklahoma. Okay. Got it. I reach out to him all the time. Uh, there's another agent here named Chris Pacey who has a farmer's agency here in Denver, uh-huh. and he was on the company side when I was, and he's yeah. been on the company side thirty years. Yeah. I wouldn't have made it thirty days on the company side if it had been for Chris. Yeah. Because I flew around the country speaking, and nobody ever said you can't say that. Oh. Well, you're not paying me, so I don't care what you think, oh. right? Then I get to the company side, they're like, You can't well, say that. <laughs> you can't say this and this and this because you're now representing the company. Yeah, right. The, the best conversation I ever had, me yeah. and compliance were like this, as you yeah, can imagine. Oh, yeah, I bet. So I bet. the head of compliance finally calls me in and says, Jack. You can't say that. We don't want you to lose your passion. That's what makes you you. Yeah. But we need compliant-friendly passion. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to go home and figure out what compliant-friendly <laughs> passion was, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. And I would send an email to somebody high up, and I meant it this way, yeah. but they took it a whole oh, different yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. So Chris Chris says, you're not allowed to send any emails out to anyone without me reading them first. That's a good thing. he would go, that one's fine, send it. No, I know what you're trying to say, but it's not going to come yeah, across yeah, that way. Yeah. So he was my godsend. I always yeah. told Chris... I would have never lasted three years on the company side without him. That's good. Yeah. That's good to have a friend like that. But you know who I, who, who who has been there every step of the way that I go to on everything? Who's My that? beautiful wife. Yeah. Man, when we started from scratch yeah. and we had $300 in our bank account with five kids, we lived on credit cards. Yeah. She made a pound, a pound of hamburger meat last a month. I don't know how she did it. <laughs> she made a hundred different ways to make top ramen noodles. Yeah. We maxed out our credit cards. Right. And I quit. I quit the insurance business 12 times my first year. Yeah. My wife wouldn't let me quit. Yeah. She's like, she no, supported you're... me when I said we're going to start from scratch. Mm-hmm. She supported me when we were living pretty comfortably, and I went on the road and she became a single mom. Mm-hmm. She, she supported me when I said we're going to uproot, move to Colorado. Mm-hmm. And she supported me when I thought we're going to leave all this farmer stuff behind and start over again. Yeah. So she's the one that I run everything by. Yeah. If it's not okay with her, I don't do it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. She's much smarter than me. Yeah. I, I kicked I, I outpunted my coverage when I married her and I married way above my 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 pay. Rate. I can't wait to meet her one yeah. day. So I can't amazing. wait to meet her one day. Yeah. I'm sure I will. Uh last question. What would you tell young Jack? How long have you been in the insurance industry? Forty years. Twenty years. How long what would you tell twenty Jack twenty years ago? Especially with the thing, the way things were earlier uh, back then, staff up. Replicate yourself, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You're, you're never going to reach. You may, but it's going to be very hard doing a hundred thousand a month by yourself. Yeah, right. Yeah, hire producers. Well, maybe as a captive, not right, as an right, independent. Right, right, right. Replicate yourself. Yeah, right. Uh, hire producers. Yeah, hire staff. Yeah, uh, hire people to do the things you don't want to do. Yeah, because again, you should be coming to the office every day doing what you want to do, what you have to do. Yeah, I wish I would have staffed up sooner. Yeah, but I wanted to save that dime. Yeah, which I stunted my growth. Yeah, and then I had that thing: if you want something done right, do it yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wasn't a very good delegator. Yeah. Delegate. Yeah. You may have somebody in your office that does something 75% as good as you, yeah. but that's good enough. Yeah. Okay. Because that frees you up to do other things. This is good advice, but but I would say this is where most agents struggle, right? right. Most agents get themselves to a two, three, four million dollar book of business and go, and, and it's it's the whole principle, what got me here won't get me there. Right. Okay. So um it's great advice, but uh, a lot of agents struggle with, I'm a sales guy. I put in and I got it done and I finally am making a killer living. I'm living off of a $3 million written premium book of business or, you know, whatever revenue book of business. And, uh, but I can't relinquish my, my 
what I do every single day and give it to other people. Wow. So I love what you're saying. I, I agree completely with what you're saying. I think it was Daniel Song who said, uh, and maybe Chris Paradiso who said something like, get out of the day-to-day of sailing as quickly as you possibly can. Right. Like that, that was one, I think that's what they say. I'm not sure if I remember correctly, but I think it was them where they're saying, get out of, you know, the day-to-day of being the person who sells the policy so that you can start managing and growing and replicating and doing all the stuff that you said. So I agree completely with it, Jack, but how would you, uh, what would you say to the agents who are like, I can't, I have to sell eight policies a day and it has to be me or else, you know, I'm just having the hardest time shifting out of the gear of me being the guy who does all of it and saying, go ahead, you guys take it. Or, or building the infrastructure in there to have other people take it. What's more powerful, Sean? You selling eight policies a day or having three other people sell it, each selling eight policies a day? The latter. Right. And when you first start in the insurance business, especially if you start from scratch, yeah. you're doing, in the first year, you're doing 90% marketing mm-hmm. and 10% service work. Mm-hmm. That flips on you at some point. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, you're doing 90% service work and 10% marketing. Mm-hmm. Your growth is done. Mm-hmm. Your growth is done. I agree. Now, if you want to get to $3 million and stay at $3 million, Go for it. Yeah. I, I'm not saying I want to get to 10 million and stop. I'm right. not saying I want to get to 20 million sure, and stop. Sure. But if you're not growing, you're going backwards. I agree. Because no matter how good you are, you have a certain amount of people walking out the back door every day. 100%. They die. They yep. move to another state. Yep. They, their brother in law is now in the business. Yep. They found it yep. cheaper, right? Yep. yep. So when you first start, just to, to grow by 10 policies, let's say we're going by policies. Sure, sure. To grow by 10 policies, you write 10 policies. Uh-huh. Five years later, to grow by 10, you got to write 40. That's right. And so you, you've got to replicate yourself and replicate yourself. Yeah. And again, I did not do that. Yeah. And I still had a great career with farmers. But if I had let go of some of that earlier micromanaging, I've got to do it. i got to replicate myself. I, I would have grown faster. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I would do different. Is okay. Rep, so know. what would you, what, on what time frame would you tell somebody to do that? Uh, a new agent, Again. new Jack, a new Jack is a new farmer's agent. Would you say start replicating yourself immediately or say at year one, at year two, what would you tell new Jack? Soon as you looking back on your career and your agency, Hey, new Jack, you should have done this. If you're, if the majority of your day is, is servicing and not marketing, it's time to hire staff. Okay. So and as I got further on, you know what, what became my, my bitch mark for hiring staff. Yeah. If I ever had to answer the phone. If that phone was ringing, nobody was answering. I'm yeah. like, I don't have enough staff because I don't want to answer the phone. Sure, sure. I, I don't want to answer the yeah, phone. Yeah, I, yeah. I'd answer the phone and forget who uh, the hell who I was and where yeah, I was at. Yeah. Right. I remember I answered the phone one time and a lady goes, "Can I speak with Tina?" And I said, "Well, she's uh, she's on the phone. Can I speak with Lila? Well, it looks like she has somebody at her desk. Can I speak with Lena? Well, it looks like Lena's at lunch. Do but I hey, ha- do I have to speak with Jack? I'm Jack. <laughs> I'm the agent. Yeah. I would be more than glad to help you. You know what she said? Uh, no, I'll just, wait for somebody she else. She goes, you'll just f it up, and she had bombed me by the way. <laughs> she goes, you'll just f it up. I'll call you later. Yeah, yeah. I'll call back later. Yeah. And I remember being a little bit offended, but I thought, no, she's right. I would have it up. Yeah, yeah. I would have it up. Yeah. So, guys, when you first start. You live for the day or, or think about the day that when everybody doesn't have to talk to Jack. Yeah, it's great. I like when they don't want to talk to me anymore. Yeah. When they want to talk to, yeah. to the staff instead of me. Yeah. That frees me up to be writing more life or to be doing what I want to do. Right, right. Right? I love so, it. guys, if, if you're not going to the office every day doing what you want to do, I'm going to say it again. It's the third time. If you're, not, if you're going to the office every day doing what you have to do, not what you want to do, yep. you're doing it wrong. And it probably means it's time to, to hire someone. Yep. I, I you know... I don't know how to put stuff in there's, easily. There's no better. That's, I don't want to know. Yeah. I don't want to know how. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I know how either, actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't done I don't know. But uh, it's such good advice, and you said it the right way. I mean, there's so many agents who are going to the office today making a killing, uh-huh. but they don't want to do it anymore. Uh-huh. And they, they're just going, how do I stop doing this? Because I'm making so much money, but I'm, I'm burning myself out so fast but they don't know how to shift the gear and let go of control and replicate themselves. And so I think you're absolutely right. Uh, You need to see that day coming quicker or faster so that you can say, I see that day coming where I'm going to be burning out or I'm already doing stuff I don't want to be doing. So I need to start thinking about how I get away from that so that I can start enjoying my life and my career better. And for you very new agents, my philosophy was you got to outwork everyone. I can't work smarter than these people because I don't know enough yet. Right. But nobody's going to outwork Jack Jameson. Right. I started with two other agents. We yeah. all started in the district office at the same time. Yeah. I got at the office 6.30 every morning so I could start getting everything ready to cold call at 8. They came in 
10, 11 in the morning. Yeah. I never took a lunch because you could come and do to, to, uh, on your lunch hour and talk to me about insurance. Right. So I kept protein bars at my desk. Yeah. They took a two hour lunch. Yeah. If, if, they Friday afternoon, they were golfing. They they they, they left yeah. at three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, right? I was down there to seven o'clock, eight or nine o'clock at night. What I yeah. would usually do, go home and have dinner with my family at five mm-hmm. to six, so mm-hmm. I could hear about the kids' day. Mm-hmm. Then I would go in the basement and cold call. Yeah, uh, till ten o'clock at night. Yeah, right. I might have a kid on my lap, but at yeah. least Daddy was home. Yeah, yeah. And then I didn't work some Saturdays. I worked every Saturday. Yeah. You know what I did for my first year to keep me busy and positive is I would. Uh, on Saturdays, I would knock on apartment complexes and sell renter's insurance door to door. Wow! There was a, a, a I know on, on some of the notes to get ready for this was about what's your funniest insurance story, and I was thinking, I was really good and good at selling renter's insurance door to door. And guess what? Years later, those people became homeowners, yeah, business owners. We all started off renting, right? But I had my spill down, so I would oh, knock man. on your door, especially the rougher the neighborhood. Sure. And I would say, Hey, Sean, you're this is probably going to make the podcast, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Okay. I would say, Hey, Sean. Your neighbor might be cooking crack, <laughs> and he could burn down this. And, and in Casper, that's a good. That's, a, that's probably a, good <laughs> that's a possibility. That's a, a really good chance. So, and I'd say he could burn down this whole complex, and you could lose all your stuff. Do you want right. your stuff replaced? Right. And, the, and the guy or girl would go. I suspect my neighbor's cooking crack. <laughs> There's a funny smell coming from over there, right? So I go to my district manager. I go, Hey, I want to do a commercial for the radio, but I need help paying for it. He goes, Well. You know, you're killing it, so I'll help you, but it depends what the commercial is. And you I go, can't say your neighbor's cooking crack. Here's the, here's the line. If you suspect your neighbor's cooking crack, call Jack. And I, he's like, hey, I love it. It's very witty, but it's never going to get through compliance. Right, right. You can't mention crack and farmers in the same sentence. Okay, so, let's not. <laughs> but I hey, got to start somewhere. I love friend. it. I but love I it. outworked everybody. I love it. When I go to talk, especially to new agents, they want me to show them a secret handshake. Yeah, yeah. They want me to write a formula. Yeah, right, right, right. When I tell them I outworked everybody, yeah. they're like, oh, never mind, I'm out. Yeah, yeah. I want, they, everybody wants that magic bullet. Yeah. And in the beginning, man, you just got to work your tail off. So seriously, very seriously, last question. Uh, you're in that state of your career again where you just got to hustle and work your freaking tail off because you're starting all over, right? Um, uh, you feel good about that or, you, you, or do you hate that? I feel good about it. Yeah. It's much easier this time because I get to hustle my butt off with the knowledge that I have. Uh, I had to hustle my butt off 20 years ago with no knowledge. Yeah. I just fake it. It was just uncomfortable. You know, fake it till you make it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that type of deal. So I'm much better off now. I'm not having to live on credit cards this time around either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, before, you know what my biggest motivation was, Sean? Yeah. I would get up in the morning and I'd see my five kids sleeping and my wife sleeping. And I would go, I either sell something today or we don't eat. Yeah. That's some good motivation. That's great motivation. That's some good motivation. Um. And I always say that there's some agents out there that just have never been dead ass broke, and it yeah, shows. Yeah. Because when you're dead ass broke, it, it, it motivates the heck out of you. Yeah. Right. So yeah. now I'm getting to, I'm getting to hustle again, but yeah. I'm getting to hustle with not worrying about if I don't sell something today, you know, we're still going to eat. Yeah. And, and with the knowledge that I have, and before with new excitement, my kids were young. I would think now this I'm time we got new kids. excitement. Yeah. I learned something from my kids every yeah. day. Yeah. It, it's it's amazing as a parent. Yeah. You teach your kids, yeah. right, the best you can. And then they get older and they start teaching you. Yeah. You know, and it's pretty yeah. cool. They're going, Dad, you're running this agency old school. We got to we gotta take this thing to a new place. I get a lot of that. Yeah. And, and I get, quit micromanages. We know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get a lot of, we're calling mom. Yeah. <laughs> and I get home and my wife goes, you were me. You didn't really say this, did you? call me and go, I sold three lot policies today. And I go, I would have sold six, but three's good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's like, be nicer. I'm like, hey, I'm harder on my kids than anyone. Yeah. Pushing them. Uh, I appreciate you coming down. You, I appreciate you spending this time with us. Uh, Jack Jameson is absolutely amazing. You couldn't have watched this podcast without knowing that. But uh, if you have a group of agents getting together in any hotel lobby or any conference room anywhere across the United States, and you want them to sell more life insurance, I don't know a single person better than Jack Jameson. I saw him personally with my own eyes. I cried with my own tears and was motivated to learn more. So even though I am a hardcore core PNC guy. Jack definitely has these wheels turning in my own head. And uh, I appreciate you coming down, Jack. I really do. You're amazing. Thank you very much. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Premier Group Insurance is providing this podcast for informational uses only. This podcast should not be relied on as legal or medical advice. Reference to any specific product or entity does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation by Premier Group Insurance. The views expressed by guests are their own and their appearance on the program does not imply any endorsement to them or any entity they represent. Views and opinions expressed by Premier Group Insurance employees, i.e. Sean Michael Walker, are those of the employees and do not necessarily reflect the view of Premier Group Insurance. Copyright 2022. Premier Group Insurance, Inc. All rights reserved.